<laughs> All right. So welcome everyone to another episode. We are here at Hummingbird Ranch in New Mexico, outside about an hour outside of Taos, New Mexico. It's an amazing 500-acre ranch and community in the the high elevation alpine forest, as you can see. And I have here with me today, uh, Catherine and Carolyn of the um, co-creation work that I've been involved in this weekend with them and, and as I've been here at this community last month with my family. And today we're gonna ask Catherine and Carolyn a little bit, little bit more about their work and, and uh, how we can get connected in with what they're working on in the world. Some beautiful, amazing co-creation processes and practices. So yeah, we'll just jump right in. Okay. So um, first question is, what is co-creation work and where did it come from? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, the way we define co-creation, which is a little bit different how business defines co-creation. Most people in business talk about either cooperation or collaboration. But we go beyond that and we say it's conscious co-participation with the impulse of creation or the patterns of creation. And we see it as being both vertical, so aligning the essence of who we are with the divine intelligence or spirit and with nature, and it also has a horizontal connection. That would be my essence to your essence would mm. also be co-creation. Mm. We often refer to co-creation as the relational path to awakening. So it's so much about how we be both with one another as well as with the the voice of Gaia with the wisdom of nature like really tuning in to what is it that wants to emerge so mm. it's a, um, it's a really integrating of the feminine principles I would say of allowance and of of a receptive gesture with the masculine principles of focus and structure but it <clears throat> it allows for um, a, a union between those or an integration let's mm. say in our the way that we live our lives mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and where it came from well the first people i heard speak about co-creation were peter and eileen caddy and dorothy mclean who were co-founders of findhorn community in scotland mm -hmm. and initially they talked about co-creating with the elementals the devas with the nature spirits and a lot of people know about the Findhorn Garden and how successful that was. And then David Spangler joined that community and he brought in the social aspect of co-creation. But in my life personally, co-creation came into my life in 1983 in working with Barbara Marks Hubbard, mm. who's a very gifted visionary, futurist, a conscious evolutionary mm -hmm. and I was working with her on her political campaign for a positive future and these practices uh, came in my life by coming through me in the in the field of that campaign so that's how they emerged in my life beautiful beautiful mm -hmm. so you use it a lot working with groups and with communities and mm -hmm. corporations is there is there any other ways that this co-creation work can be applied well, really in any of our relationships, whether it be mm -hmm. our intimate partnerships mm. or um, any projects, work we're doing. Um, a lot of churches have used it, Unity Church particularly, have, mm -hmm. have really engaged the process of co-creation using the Co-Creators Handbook, um, which we'll speak about in a minute. And um, where we've had you know, people from so many different, both generations and walks of life, find it so valuable. Mm -hmm. Even families. Mm -hmm. beautiful in families because it, uh, it supports, it's a partnership model. Mm -hmm. So it makes all of us equal to one another. We're moving out of this, what we call the dominator model, the whole idea of hierarchy and somebody telling uh, someone else what to do. And in this model, we look within for our guidance and, mm -hmm. and we, we empower one another and we see one another as co-equals. Beautiful, mm -hmm. beautiful. And, and we, um, my experience is that both Carolyn and I feel we're very much encoded with mm -hmm. the understanding of co-creation. Mm. I mean, it first came into my life also through Barbara Mark Supper, but in the 70s. Mm -hmm. And I noticed that through the last 40 years that everything I've done has been in that realm of working with another in the co-creative model. Mm -hmm. And it was really in coming together then with Carolyn in the late 80s mm -hmm. that I recognized that she, had, she and Barbara had defined the template mm -hmm. that we were just naturally living. Mm -hmm. But I think people... Um, discover within themselves that that's just their natural inclination. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's the way they're wired. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And what I experienced this weekend is it's very similar to just 
you know, really being being connected to a higher purpose, a higher calling in the work that we're doing, and cre- you know, aligning the whole team with that that sort of field of uh-huh. of, of alignment and mm-hmm. energy mm-hmm. and um, cohesion and, and coherence, which I um, I love that that component of the the weekend training and. Mm-hmm. And um, so what, over the years you've been using this, this co-creation work, what do you feel like is at the essence or at the heart of it that really is uh, a transformational aspect of this work? Well, there are a number of elements that are at the heart of the co-creative process, but um, it is a heart-based process. So Mm -hmm. uh, we talk about building the resonant field, and when when we as individuals are in our essence, in our hearts, in a place of non-judgment, non-criticism, feeling really centered within ourselves, it's that resonant field that we create where two or more are gathered Mm -hmm. that really calls forth the magic of co-creation. In fact, you really, it's pretty necessary to have a resonant field in order for co-creation to emerge. Mm -hmm. Because if it's more, if our actions are more egoically driven, you know, where there's agendas or positionality or judgments going on, then it doesn't allow for the free flowing of spirit or of Mm -hmm. the creative impulse to come through us. I mean, our egos become the vehicle for that, but what's really guiding is our essence. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm reminded in this moment of it's almost like a an artist or a sculptor when they're when they're working on their creative masterpiece. Yeah. They're just connected into a flow mm-hmm. of energy that's kind of coming through them, and they're yes. they're not concerned about nece- necess- not always, but mm-hmm. true. But usually, they're not concerned about what people are going to think or say or right. or do. It's just this energy of being one with what they're creating. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so this is kind of applying that creation process this co-creative process Mm -hmm. in a in a group and with families and Mm -hmm. different different contexts that that that's you know needed yeah right and as a group Mm -hmm. process too it's really about drawing forth the highest and best in each other Mm -hmm. so there's an upliftment that happens a mutual upliftment Mm -hmm. where we're seeing the divine qualities within each other and we're drawing forth that creative impulse in a way that it it finds expression supporting it Mm -hmm. Mm, absolutely yeah Yeah. i felt that Mm. this weekend yeah Yeah. it's definitely a flow state Mm. it's like what athletes feel when they get in the zone or artists when they just totally lose themselves there they and the art are one Mm -hmm. it's that kind of a field yeah 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 and i love that there's this reference too that it was encoded in in the two of you Mm -hmm. as you know and it just sort of came out as this this, um, you know, as a part of the work that you've been doing in the world, because yeah. when I first started out as a student activist, when I was 18 in Santa Barbara, I was, you know, involved in, in leading these student organizations, and I, um, I didn't have any formal training in group process facilitation uh-huh. or, mm-hmm. you know, how to, how to be a leader, but mm-hmm. I was able to, um, fortunately, mostly listen to my heart, and I was very connected to the purpose that, uh-huh. yeah. you know, that we have to do something about the state of our planet, like this is our our last chance really this our generation it's our last chance to really make a big difference yeah and so i was able to i feel like tap into this this higher resonant yeah. frequency with mm-hmm. with the groups as a student activist and and i've felt that over the years with with council the way of council work mm-hmm. that there's this mm-hmm. um, one of the principles or, or um, concepts that's used in the the way of council work is to always be reading the field mm-hmm. so we can be aware you know if someone is mm-hmm. is maybe closing down or, or checking out in mm-hmm. the group we can mm-hmm. kind of feel that energy and and check in yeah and i, I just love that that ability to mm-hmm. really be in the in the heart frequency in the, the yeah. heart field and aware it's this uh, greater awareness yeah yeah well we we believe and we have experienced that all of us every human being is a master in some arena mm. and those of us who are re- really lucky find ourselves in that space where where that is revealed to us and i would suggest you know your mastery you are encoded with being a leader and being a process person too mm. and it's just it's in you so when you're in that space it just comes comes forth mm. yeah yeah, yeah, definitely. We all have our unique yeah. gifts and strengths, and and mm-hmm. that's that's the journey of life, right? Finding what it is that we yeah. that we're gifted with that's unique and, and powerful that we have to to share with the world. Yeah, yeah. And then we're fulfilling our soul's purpose or why we're here, mm-hmm. and life is fulfilling. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah. So jump into the next question here in terms of this uh, this work. You know, a lot of what my my uh, inspiration for doing these videos is I want to I want to provide people out there. I want to provide our viewers with 
with really empowering messages and you know this this co-creation work is really empowering because it, it teaches us these necessary skills for working with groups and how to really um, you know build an energy in a field that that can make them so much more productive and efficient mm -hmm. but with, with that being said over your years being involved in this work what do you feel like is the most important message for um, for our viewers for for young people for adults for people of all ages that um, you know given our transformational mm -hmm. times our challenging times so much going on in the world politically and and uh, with conflict mm -hmm. from each of you what do you feel like is the most important message for um, for us all to hold in our hearts well I would say um, follow your bliss and listen within learn how to listen to that still small voice within and follow that mm. that would be my message mm. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, boy, there's a lot there. Um, you know, as, as so many of the systems are breaking down around us and there's a fair amount of chaos and, and confusion, I think, that's present, that um, to be able to be strong and resourced within is just, to me, foundational and critical to mm -hmm. navigate these challenging times. Mm -hmm. And then to feel a sense of belonging and community and to work with others. That's what mm -hmm. I think at the time of the lone wolf is over great expression, mm -hmm. um, that it's really about cultivating community and relationship so that we rec recognize we're all in it together. And again, how do we then come together in an uplifting way? Mm -hmm. And um, being more in the flow state, there's a the great quote about letting go of the riverbanks and going with the flow mm -hmm. and really feeling carried by life, I mean, in an empowered way, yeah. but um, where we're not in that struggle resisting and trying right. to create something to happen that's actually not what's emerging. Mm, mm. So the sense of inner peace and um, connectedness I think is very strong in mm -hmm. following these principles, this understanding, mm -hmm. yeah. which are some of the key principles of many of the traditions, wisdom traditions of our world. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah, you're, you're reminding me of the, I think maybe even you're referencing the Hopi Elder Prophecy and yeah. we, um, we were uh, introduce that when we were student activists and that has been so mm -hmm. so helpful to hold in my consciousness as well this mm -hmm. idea of you know going with that current that flow of the river yeah. knowing that it has its destination and yeah. you know like following that bliss like you were saying mm -hmm. Carolyn and mm -hmm. and um, and and then Catherine you're referencing not clinging to the shore you know that, yeah. that um, I think it says that we will be ripped apart if we try and cling to yeah. attachment or yeah. or the known the, you know these yeah. things that are comfortable and safe and mm -hmm. And then the, my favorite part is the you know, knowing the river has its destination and look around you and celebrate. <laughs> <laughs> right, These could be right. good times. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, I think they're very inspiring times. I yeah. have a lot of optimism and, and mm -hmm. of course, I'm mostly connected with what's uh, emerging, what's breaking through all the great positive, innovative mm -hmm. solutions that are coming mm -hmm. forth and the, um, the beautiful, heartful, compassionate actions that are happening. And I wanted to weave back around to your speaking about the activism, mm -hmm. because I think we're all being called into a stronger participation in responding to the challenges that are happening, but to do so from a non-reactive place, from an open-hearted place. So it's mm -hmm. just acknowledging you for naturally just tuning into that in your mm -hmm. activist work. Mm -hmm. And I think to be a conscious activist and in uh, applying these principles, then we're not feeding the polarity yeah. that then just magnifies it. Mm -hmm. But we're actually kind of doing more of an Aikido mm -hmm. in seeing how to work with the energy mm. so that it can more dissipate yeah. mm -hmm. and be infused with love, which really is mm -hmm. what it's all about. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I, I learned quickly as a student activist that's that importance of if we are fighting against something, mm -hmm. it's this idea of what we resist mm -hmm. persists. Yeah. And yeah. what we push against has more strength or more yeah. force. Right. And so that absolutely, that's so important just to acknowledge that we're all in this together. Find the common ground. Mm -hmm. Go, f you know, mm -hmm. go for that positive vision. Work right. towards it. Yeah. And um, you know, not necessarily be against anyone or anything. That's mm -hmm. right. But for what's possible yeah. and what's evolving to to emerge, what's emerging on this planet. Yeah. Right, with compassion and yeah. and really a movement toward unity. Mm -hmm. It's not that we want to create more separation, we want to find those places that we unify, mm -hmm. come together. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Well, 
Anything else you want to say before we give uh, give our viewers some resources and some ways to get connected in with your work? You're working on some um, the third edition of your book, is that? Yeah, yeah. I'm, yeah. I'll show you. This is uh, this is what the cover looks like right now. The book is being it's Beautiful. with a designer, so we've written, we've edited, and now it's with a designer. So this book will be, this is we call it the Co-Creators Handbook 2.0 because we have revised it and uh, it's going to be available in early October 2016 and uh, Catherine and I are two of the uh, partners in a business called Living Co-Creation along with our husbands mm -hmm. and that's the website Living Co-Creation and then we're also a uh, part of Global Family. I'm a co-founder of Global Family, which is a nonprofit founded in 1986, and our purpose, our vision is shifting consciousness from separation and fear to unity, love, and co-creation. Mm. And so we have a Global Family website as well. So we're fully engaged with this work all the time and love it. You know, when you're, <laughs> when it's what you are here to do, you love it. Mm. Yeah. Excellent. And yeah. you can't do anything but do it. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. yeah. So just a few more words on Living Co-Creation is that we're the work of Living Co-Creation, we just did the retreat mm -hmm. that LEAF was a part of, and then we're available for consulting and coaching and, and doing events and working with groups. Mm -hmm. Because our, our ultimate goal is really to support the emergence of a co-creative culture. Mm -hmm. And through the core group process with small groups, linking together and it becomes then a movement. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Great. So your yeah. third edition comes out in October. Yeah. And you have the um, Living Co-Creation. That's your business. Mm -hmm. They can um, connect with you there if they'd like and get mm -hmm. support and, and help mobilize their movement. Mm -hmm. And also the... Um, the, uh, what was the other one? Global Family. Global Family, the Global yes. Family. Tell me a little more about Global Family. Yeah, well, Global Family, as I said, 1986, we began, and for the first 10 years, we were focused on global work, on seeding core groups around the world, and all of that happened before the Internet. Mm. And then in 1996, Catherine and I and our husbands and two others co-founded Hummingbird Community as a living laboratory for co-creation and conscious evolution. So our focus has become more local here can we live this in this way and now we're going global again mm. so seating core groups and we're pulling together all the tools right now so that we can take this out and because what we feel is that what the world needs now is it needs more love more creativity more empowerment mm -hmm. and that's what this process is all about mm. beautiful yeah. And, Great. and before we close, yeah. I'd just like to say a few more words about Hummingbird. You yeah, referred absolutely. to it at the beginning. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. And Carolyn just spoke about um, us co-founding it in 1996 because we really felt like we wanted to live these principles. We wanted to um, create an environment where we could be in a living laboratory and experiment of what it would be like to um, to just be doing this 24-7. Mm -hmm. So over the last 20 years, the community has grown now to about 25 people. And... Um, you know, it's been a great cauldron for both our individual mm -hmm. growth, our collective growth, what works, where are the edges, how do we just amp up what needs to um, really be present in order for the co-creative principles to be most effective mm -hmm. and for our relationships to be most fulfilling. Mm -hmm. Excellent. So yeah, it's been you. great having you and yeah. Sarah and the kids here for mm. this month. And yeah, it's been mm -hmm. awesome to be here. This place is amazing. If you can get a <laughs> chance to come check it out and beautiful wildflowers everywhere. There's a year-round stream flowing. You can probably hear it in the background of the audio <laughs> there. And it's the incredible, incredible sight. Really enjoy being here and just mm. the, the field of this place, this mm. natural, you yeah. know, um, pristine ecology and ecosystem is just so i mean the field it creates alone yeah. is, is healing and transformational That's and then true. when you have a group group of people like you all coming mm -hmm. together to create this you know even stronger field of love it's powerful really yeah. powerful yeah. yeah it's amazing when people come that are tuned in that really feel when they come across the cattle guard onto the land where we've consciously been cultivating this resonant field mm. that there's a palpable sense of it mm -hmm. you know and then just um, knowing that something is possible, you know, yeah. that is not so evident out in the dominant culture. Excellent. That's definitely part of our inspiration with it. 
Excellent. Mm-hmm. Great. And I'm gonna I'm gonna do a couple other episodes on hummingbird while I'm here. So okay. look for those mm-hmm. as well. To, um, do do some tours of some of the buildings in one episode and some other interviews. So check those out as well. Mm-hmm. And yes, thank you so much for your work in the world and for taking some time to mm-hmm. sit and and share this this video with with our uh, viewers and mm-hmm. and all the people who um, are called to be engaged in making the world a better place and creating a new earth. Mm. Yeah, that's what we're all up to, eh? Yeah. yeah. Thanks yeah. so much. Yeah. Thanks, yeah. Lee. Yeah. Thank you and have a beautiful day. Mm-hmm.